You're watching the 1996 World Cup of Hockey on TSN. company have dug themselves a deep hole. The Czechs face a must-win situation in order to get to North America, but a win over Germany is hardly in the can. If Germany is thinking upset, now is the time, and George Kingston knows it. His team has outscored the Czechs, and if they can do it one more time, it means a trip to Montreal. TSN is proud to present the 1996 World Cup of Hockey. Today, live from Garmisch, it's the Czech Republic versus Germany. Hi, everyone, and welcome to TSN's continuing coverage of this inaugural World Cup of Hockey. I'm Darren Detition, along with TSN hockey analyst Bob McKenzie, and we'll talk about our game in a moment or two. Let's start with Team Canada. Some big news being announced this morning. Yeah, Team Canada will not have Brendan Shanahan in the lineup. He's been suspended for one game by NHL Senior Vice President Brian Burke after a telephone hearing last night for this incident. Alexander Simak. The Russian they call KGB gets the butt end and elbow up on Shanahan. Shanahan reacts very angrily to it. A big chop to the face breaks the orbital bone or the cheekbone of Alexander Simak. His future is in doubt in this tournament. Shanahan's future is very clear. He will not be playing for Team Canada tonight. And we'll have much more on Team Canada and their prospects against the United States. Uh, they'll play in Philadelphia. But big news for Germany, too, when it comes to their goaltending. Explain, please. Well, it is a curious development. Olaf Kolzig, who is by far the best goaltender on Germany, the guy who plays goal for the Washington Capitals, so much better than what, everything else they've got, didn't play in Game 2 and apparently is not going to play today. Joseph Hess is going to play in net for the Germans. It's a curious situation because the thing you've got to remember for George Kingston is you can't always always think like a Canadian. And in a Canadian situation, uh, you want to win the hockey game. You want to advance. You want your team to win. In this particular instance, I'm sure they're looking at the overall welfare of the German development system, and they're saying to themselves, Olaf Kolzeg isn't really a German per se. He doesn't live in Germany. He doesn't train with these guys. And they've got these other German goaltenders. They're giving each one of them a game. And I'm sure it's all part and parcel of their mind of developing. But I know if I was coaching the team, if Ole the goalie is healthy, that's the guy you want in because it's a one-game sudden-death situation with the Czechs today. You win this one, and you're coming to North America for a playoff game. Game. That's the way I'd look at it, but they, uh, they're assuming he's not injured. But uh, to our knowledge, he doesn't have an injury that's going to keep him out of the game today. It's just a coach's decision. You know what? It is absolutely amazing. I thought George Kingston was over to the Institute of National Program, not a house league program. Nonetheless, Ole says he knew it was coming. All three goalies played well in camp. Well, I was, uh, I was told that uh, we were going to go with the best goalie coming out of uh, the two-week camp. And, uh, um, you know, all three of us played well in camp. I, I mean, I really can't be uh, upset about the situation that's going on right now because all three of us deserve to play. And, uh, I mean, Pepe, uh, the goalie is playing tonight, he, he was the only guy that won a game in the preseason. So um, I've really got no, no room to be upset, of, uh, upset with. I mean, uh, they've got a hockey program here that they need to develop, and they want to use the local guys. And, uh, um, you know, I, I believe what George is doing is right, although, I, you know, I'd like to get in the net, but I understand his situation too. Oh, that's very good news for the Czech Republic. Now, for their thoughts on this afternoon's hockey game, the first of a doubleheader on TSN, let's go to Paul Romanek and Gary Green. Yeah, so, guys, uh, in the one sense, it is a surprise that Olaf Kolzig isn't playing, but uh, as you heard Ole mention, really, when you look at the whole picture, they knew, all three goaltenders and the team, what George Kingston's plan were heading into this tournament. So, in that sense, it's not a huge shock. 
Well, it's not a shock, but on the other hand, if you're coming into a do-or-die game like this right now, you look at the checks, and it's got to be Nedved and Yager tonight that have got to do it for them. So who would you rather have in net? Well, I'd rather have someone that's done it before and played very well. Just think back to the Pittsburgh-Washington series in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, although Pepe Heiss, who is going to play, uh, they feel there could be a real emotional element there because this is his hometown. The fans will really be behind him. Oh, when you talk about the checks, maybe the biggest soap opera so far in the European pool. Who's running the asylum, the inmates or the coaches? What's going on? Not the coaches, I can tell you that, folks. There's going to be some changes again tonight, but the faces are pretty much the same. What will change, though, is the length of the bench. They're going to go with a short bench. The National Hockey League players aren't happy with the fact that there are four lines. They've been going with four lines. They don't feel, and of course, they're looking for some excuses here that they can get into the game. So tonight, it's going to be the players' way. They're going to go with three lines, and we'll see whether or not they do the job. And they'll be in tough against a German team playing at home in a beautiful venue. Lots of support in what many are calling one of the biggest, arguably the biggest game in the history of German ice hockey. Thanks very much, gentlemen. It's basically a big beer hall with ice. The fans love their hockey. Uh, so do we. Stay tuned. You are looking live at Garmisch, Germany. They are getting set for a 60-minute showdown. Perhaps maybe more time if need be. The winner moves on to North America. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for the Czech Republic. Robert Reichel is their number one center. Well, they've got to get this second line going, second line in name only. Peter Nedved, Patera, and Jarmer Jager. Nedved's been holding on to the puck too much. They've got to get him more to Jager. I wonder about the wisdom of having these two guys play together. When you take a look at their blue line, are they expecting more offense as well uh, from the likes of Roman Hammerlich? They're expecting offense from just about everybody, but they would like to get some from the guys on the backside. They're all capable of doing it. Netchkash, Hammerlich, Sephora, guys that play in the National Hockey League and can jump up and into the play. Uh, we talked about the starting goaltender for Germany. The starting goaltender for the Czech Republic is Roman Turek, and he has to play a lot better as well. He does. He's been a little bit shaky in this tournament, and they really do miss Dominic Hoshin. Okay, on to the German starting lineup. Uh, Mark McKay, transplanted Canadian. He starts at center. As we take a look at their blue line, Goldman, Kuntz, they will need a big game as well. That's if they're going to protect their goaltender, because we expect him to see a lot of rubber. Josef Heiss. He is the hometown favorite. He's going to have to play extremely well. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll drop the puck. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey on TSN. At this year's World Hockey Championships, Roman Turek was front and center for the Czech Republic. He had a 1.88 goals against average. He was named the top goaltender in the tournament. Dallas goes out and signs him. We expected big things, but yet... Have you been impressed by his play? I haven't been particularly impressed, but remember, he's only played two games, and it is a difficult situation because this Czech team leads this tournament in disorganization from the top on down, right from the federation through the coaching staff to the players. So it's unfair to pin all the problems that the Czechs are having on a couple of shaky goals here or there from Roman Turk. You gave all those numbers of how he did at the World Championship. That establishes the fact that he is a credible professional style goaltender and the Dallas Stars as you said that's why they've signed him but the thing and I've talked about it before is every time there's a goal scored on Roman Turek the arms are coming up he's pointing out at his defenseman he had lots of interchange on the ice and that's not the way that the game of hockey is supposed to be played it's supposed to be a team game and all that shows you is that the Czechs all are on the same page when it comes to preparation for the game so I think it would be impressive today if you get out there and even if they do get if he gets a goal fired by him that the, the arms don't, don't come flying up and starts pointing fingers in the direction of his defenseman. You know what's amazing? We as Canadians believe that we have written the book on hockey. For the most part internationally we've had great success but when it comes to mannerisms and your demeanor we expect you to conform to a certain standard. If you don't do that you're subservient uh, like starting maybe your third string goaltender. It's unusual it's, to say the least. It is I, but it, it baffles me. It, it does because it goes against everything that we've ever thought of in terms of competition is that you always especially when it comes to hockey you, you do everything you can to win. Yeah. You Absolutely everything and you use every resource that you've got and in this particular instance the Germans have a resource, a resource Ole the goalie who is by far in my, in my mind their best goaltender but they're not playing him in the crucial game because they placing a higher uh, emphasis or a, a higher value on developing Pepe Heiss and some of the other guys that they've played and so it's part and parcel of, of a, a bigger overview not just looking at this game in this tournament but looking at the development of German hockey and you know 
as much as we as Canadians think we did write the book on it, maybe that's not, it, it, it's a completely different situation when you're a developing nation. Although, exactly. but at the, I think about the players on that team. If you put Coles again and give them a huge high and maybe steal the game from the Czechs and go to North America, exactly. that's a better development for the, Czech, uh, for the German team than letting a, uh, another goaltender have a 60-minute crack at the Czechs. And, and you know what would uh, also benefit the Genomet program immensely, uh, like we've seen with the Finns. Yari Curry really put Finland on the map when it comes to hockey. They need a quality name player as well. Uh, we're ready for the start of this hockey game. Let's head out to Garmisch. Here's Paul and Gary. They are saying this is the game. The biggest game perhaps in the history of German ice hockey. And the Germans rallying around their goaltender Joseph Heiss, Pepe Heiss as the players call him. This is hometown and George Kingston making the somewhat controversial although expected decision to put heist between the pipes for this game. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier on, it's quite simple. The winner of this game moves on to the next round. The loser is all finished in this inaugural World Cup. Well, a big walk Seen up my ears with here that. in the most beautiful town for hockey. Garmisch, Germany, nestled amongst the mountains. And these fans here have been ripping and roaring for about the last hour and a half. They're ready for this game tonight. Yeah, many of the seats you see there on the far side, those are the expensive sold seats. They're not totally full, but at either end of the rink is the standing room, and it is jam-packed. That is Roman Turek getting the starting goal for the Czech Republic. The referee for this game is Kerry Frazier, Ray Scapanello, and Dan Schachty are on the line. Germany is in black, the Czech Republic in white as we kick off a busy and exciting day in the hockey world. Three big games on tap today. You can see two of them on TSN, and then Canada is in action tonight. Pressure on the Germans, but they are still considered, of course, the underdogs. Lots of pressure on the Czechs, and it is not that far a drive from the Czech Republic to here, about five hours, roughly. And uh, quite a number of Czechs making the drive. And they're in this place to cheer on players like Yarmir Jager, who's out there now. We'll watch and see if the Czechs go with the short bench. Here comes Uzdorf, weaving in over the blue line. He'll dig his way down to the corner. Uzdorf being watched up there, trying to knock it loose. Puck handed away. McKay looking. Tried to center it in front. He had Jan Benda drifting towards the slot. Couldn't get it to him, though. Benda is in front again. Here's Usdorf. Centers that puck in front of the net. And a penalty coming up. Peter Nedved hauling down Mark McKay. The Germans with some early pressure. And they will get an early power play. Well, the Germans wanted to come out in this hockey game and do a couple of things. One of which play an awful lot the way that they did in game number one against Sweden. The way that they did for the first 30 minutes. They were disciplined defensively, and they had lots of intensity. You can record, but not yet. They also want to get some finishing off going for them, and Peter Nedved just hauls, throws that water bottle right against the glass. He's not happy with that call. The Germans go on the power play, and if they could ever get a goal, Paul, early in this hockey game, they could really get this crowd behind them. Well, you talk about pressure, and you see an indication of the pressure and the frustration on many of the Czech players. Uh, the players who we talked to this morning, unanimous in admitting that, yes, we are playing as individuals and not as a team, and that is the big problem. And that is just stoking the fires of frustration. Peter Nedved takes an early penalty, something the Czechs can ill afford to do. They are the favorites in this game, but still the Germans very persistent, determined, and they do play as a team. At least they have the first couple of games of this tournament. Puck back to the top of the point. Nowak shooting one. He rips it up. Doucette goes after the puck. Picked up by Baranek. Baranek looks around. He'll just eat up some time. And the puck gets cleared down the ice by Michael Sikora. 1.23 to go on the power play for Germany. We are just underway. The winner of this game moves on to the next round. Doucette clearing it in for the Germans. Brandel hustling up there after it. He'll roll it up around back of the net. Dieter Hagen trying to get to that puck. He was rubbed off the play, and it's cleared up over the glass by Robert Long. 1.07 to go on the power play. You see Joseph Branick out there for the Czechs. That's going to be pretty much his role tonight. He will be killing penalties. 
as this team has decided that they're going to go with three lines tonight. We'll see whether that continues to hold true. And I'm glad you specified the team has decided that it will go with three lines because the players are running this team. Make no mistake about that. Well, it's no secret over here that there has not been that team chemistry right from the very start. No secret as well that there's a lot of, well, lack of unity, lack of agreement. Call it what you want, but the players have not been happy and the players haven't really been together. I think more just lack of direction. Rudderless ship is the term that comes but, to mind. But you cannot blame the coaches because the coaches have wanted to direct this hockey club, Paul, but there has to be that sense of willingness to be directed, and that's what hasn't been there. And it's been very noticeable to all of the other teams and people here. On the other hand, you just got to look at George Kingston, the German team, playing a good, disciplined team game. Yes, they've been blown out their first couple of games, but look who they played, the Finns and the Swedes, teams that they just could not match up against. This was the game that they were targeting all along to win, the one that they felt they could win, and that's what George Kingston said all along. They just wanted to win one game. 48 seconds to go in the German power play. Meyer throwing it back there. Ludeman will start back. He clears it up ahead. Heck breaking down into the corner. Number 29 for Germany. Heck gets it back to Dreisel. Dreisel back to the line. Meyer shooting. Big stop by Turek as he stacked up the pads. On that drive for Meyer. He'll reload. The puck wouldn't sit for him. Gets it up to Dreisel. Dreisel working it around. 22 seconds left in the power play. Looking for a bit of room. They score. Ludman. Set up by Dreisel on the power play, and it's one to nothing for the Germans. Dreisel's been the Germans' top point getter thus far. The, third guy in the there Germans have had great six. motivation in this hockey game, and for good reason. There you saw Ludman just walking in right down the left of your screen, got that pass, and just tapped that puck in. Watch it from this angle. Ludman's walking in. He's just in a coasting motion. He has those legs apart, and he's just ready to receive that pass. Here he comes at you, folks, as soon as he got that puck. He directed it right into the empty side of the net. Ludeman gets the goal. Dreisa will pick up one assist. It comes on the power play. Stefan picks up the other assist. 2.24, the time of the power play goal. Caberly, long pass across. Yager up there after it. He's out there with Nedved and Pavel Patera. So this is a new combination for the Czechs. Normally, Polik had been out there playing with Nedved and Yager. Here's Yager, twisting around, gets it out to Patera, dropped it back in front of the net, and it's stolen by Daniel Nowak, who clears it down the ice. That's something the Czechs wanted to do in their offensive game tonight. They wanted to cycle a little bit more. They wanted to utilize some drop passes and be able to create that offense in the offensive zone. Here comes Yager, up and over the blue line. Nedved is trailing. He leaves it there. Nedved shoots. That's knocked away by Heiss. Here's Sikora. Clearing it back in. Checks make some changes in the fly. 16.34 to go in the first period. One to nothing. Germany is on top. Dreisel clearing that puck in. Heck moving up after it. Picks up the puck. Pika going towards the front of the goal. Dreisel up there looking forward as well, but that breaks up. Ruchinski trying to move it along the boards. Here's Michael Sikora. Tucks it up ahead. Rachinsky trying to get loose up the middle. He does, took the pass, but he's up there offside and play his whistle down. 16.08 to go in the first period. A power play goal from Mirko Ludeman has the Germans up 1-0. TSN is proud to present the 1996 World Cup of Hockey. The first period is brought to you by Gillette's $250,000 Triple Play Challenge at a retailer near you. Hey, absolutely no doubt whatsoever the hockey is infinitely better in the National Hockey League than anything you'll see over in Europe on a regular basis. But I'll tell you what, the crowds over here make the first all-star team every time. <laughs> well, they're good and noisy and they're hard partiers, real hard partiers. Yeah. I don't know how they last for the third <laughs> period. Oh, the same in the Czech Republic, in Sweden, Helsinki. Uh, here in Garmisch, beautiful setting, uh, sort of a... I guess a German version of a tailgate party. People standing around outside. They had the kegs of beer cracked. Big sausages going on the uh, barbecue. 
Brando flipping the puck in. Turek just steers it off into the corner. Sikora knocking his man down. That was Lupzig. Lupzig back up and into the play. Centered it out in front of the net. Ruchinski breaks that up. Dangerous move to cut away out of traffic. And he will start back. Has Long up in the wing and gets it to him. Reichel's up there too. Ruchinski tried to feed Reichel. Missed him with the pass. Here comes Brando back the other way. Puck lofted in there by Lupsig. Cleared back out. Reichel skating after it. Turns up the speed. Rachinski coming up there with him. Takes the pass. Almost redirected that. In behind Heiss. Looked as though he didn't get control of that pass. Well, that's where the Czechs can take advantage of the Germans. The Germans aren't flawless in their defensive game. George Kingston would like them to be, but they'll give you some opportunities if you work hard enough for them. That's what the Czechs have got to concentrate on tonight. Here's Hammerluck. Tried to clear it up. That was broken up by Hagen. Dieter Hagen, international hockey veteran for Germany, clearing that puck back in, and he'll back out through center as the Czechs come back. Bonk ran up against Hagen. Hagen chopped it away from him. Here's Holik. Long shot, just floats that in, chest high, heist, no problem handling that. Here's Rachinsky, backing back up towards the blue line as Nowak moves it out. Puck clear to the corner. Doucette moving up there for the Germans. Hagen comes up. Gives his man a bump. Good pace to this game in the first period. 14.35 to go. One to nothing Germany. Here comes Bach. Tried to fire it on goal. Big play there by Kunze as he got in front of it. Germans back in the transition. Ustorf in front. They score. Jürgen Rumrich. And what do you know? It's two nothing Germany. Well, who would have thought 20, this, folks? 26. The Germans' counterattack game has been excellent, and here's a perfect opportunity for them. But you've got a question. What was Yuri Kuchera doing? Watch number 14 for the Czechs. He's just loafing, coming back. Rumrich got that puck, and boy, did he ever end up firing it. Short side, right along the ice. He just beat Turret cleanly from a perfect scoring position. Off the draw, Jager coming up there after it, sent up around the boards to Usdorf. Usdorf gets it up ahead. Up along the boards, Jan Benda looking for Usdorf. Back to Goldman. He shoots. That's tip. Rebound in front. They score. has made it 3-0 for Germany. Czechs are just falling apart out there. They started things off in this period by taking a bad penalty by Peter Nedved, and now defensively, 81. they've lost it. Down 3 to nothing this early in a hockey Nedved. game. Who would have ever thought that? Two goals within 21 seconds. Turek had no idea where that puck was. I don't think anybody else on the ice did except Jan Benda. He found himself with an empty net. Turek was still looking for that puck. Look at the angle Turek's at. He was collided with. There you see Nedved right in front of him. And the Czechs have taken a penalty in the wake of the goal. Peter Nedved back in the box. He took a penalty right off the bat in this hockey game resulting in a German power play goal. So we are seeing in the first five minutes of this game really all the symptoms that have led to the demise of this Czech team. That is undisciplined play and not enough team play. Now you see Nedved's penalty right there. He was angry that the goal had gone in. And he took his frustration out and that earned him a trip to the penalty box. A very undisciplined play on Peter Nedved's part, two minor penalties early in this hockey game. The Germans back on the power play. Wow. That's all you could say is wow. This German team have got tremendous motivation. These are a bunch of players that have been accustomed to playing professional hockey here in Europe, but they don't make big money. George Kingston promised them that if they, in fact, ended up going to North America, that he'd take them to the Barbie barn for chicken and ribs. That's their incentive, folks. 
Benda gets the goal. Goldman and McKay pick up the assists at 5.58. So goals at 2.24 from Ludman. Rumrick at 5.37 and Benda at 5.58. And what a shocker. 3-0 for Germany. Dreisel picks up the puck. Germany on the power play. Dreisel gets it back to the line. Takes the return fee. Top of the point. Fired in. Rebound. Benda with a shot. And Turek with a big save there. Ustorf along the boards. Battling Baranek. And he kept it in. Benda going for the front of the net. And he was tied up on the way through and couldn't get there in time. Here comes Ustorf going for the front of the net. And they can't get the pass to him. Germans are out skating the Czechs. The Czechs look as though they have just lost again very early in this hockey game their abilities to move quickly. At least in the game that they played at home the other night, the Czechs were flying for the first half of the game before they started to lose their steam. And at this point, Gary, I mean, being a former coach, you would be well aware of this. It is more important than ever that you play as a unit and don't go out there and try to do things individually. That's going to be very difficult for the Czechs to do. Here's Hagen. Look at him. In front of the net. Puck just knocked off his stick. Only difficult, Paul, because they haven't been doing it in practice and they haven't been doing it in the game. So how are you going to create that team unity all of a sudden, not just on the bench in the dressing room, but more importantly, out on the ice? Up along the boards, puck comes back out, walking right up and firing it just wide was Daniel Noah. It's loose in front of the net. Puck comes back. Height tried to move it in, but that's tapped away. Kuchera couldn't quite sneak away up the middle. The team's at even strength, 11.49 to go in this first period. Kuchera dropped it off. That's fired up, knocked away by Heiss. And he will just hold on to it. Unbelievable, you may say. Germany off to a great start, believe it. Looking disorganized, they gave up a power play goal, 224 into the game, and then a couple of more quick ones. They're down 3 0. I'm Paul Romanock along with Gary Green at the ice rink in Garmisch Partenkirchen. The home rink for the German national team. And Germany off to a surprising 3 0 lead in this hockey game. We mentioned earlier in the tournament this team is capable and known for generating the odd upset and witness the recent World Hockey Championship last year when the Germans defeated Canada. Canada went on to face the Czech Republic in the final and lost. But they were knocked off by the Germans along the way in a big upset. Puck slid down into the corner there by Reichel. He'll give chase again along the boards. Reichel looking for Baranek. Ruchinski up there as well. Ruchinski over to pick it up. Number 25. Reichel back to Ruchinski. Tried to center it, rolled it out in front of the net. Sakura was moving in from the blue line, but had no chance of getting there. He was picked by Leipzig. Ruchinski taps it up ahead, and he'll throw it into gear. Kuchera is with him. Robert Long is the other forward out there. Here comes Kuchera. Long will charge up after it. Kuchera trailing along the boards. He gets it to him. Kuchera crashing up there, back of the net. Here's Kuchera. Shoots. Knocked away by Heiss. Holik up there after it. Number 21 for the Czechs. Trying to get loose. Pika knocked it away from him, and the puck is flipped up over the glass. And out of play, 10.38 to play in the first period. 3-0 Germany leading. What the Germans have got to concentrate on in their own end zone, now with a three-goal lead, if they, they have to make sure that positionally they play George Kingston's defensive style. They can't start running around and chasing the Czechs who are going to cycle and try to drop pass and work their way into better scoring positions. They have got to maintain their discipline defensively playing their positions. Weber throwing it back there, fired up by Hammerlick. This is Holik going after it. Heck, hooking him up on the way in. 
Here's Kunse. Throws it up off the boards. Pika will pick it up. Pika, pass up. It was behind Heck. And Heck will just back up. Roman Hammerlick. Up ahead to Nedved. You can see the Germans started setting up the neutral zone trap there. They want to make sure that they control between the blue lines in tonight's hockey game. Here comes Weber up to the blue line, gets it ahead to Nedved. Trying to fire one in. Nedved coming in on his off wing there, and the shot was tipped up out of play. 9.54 to go in the first period. 3-0 Germany on top. You get a good neutralized trap going, even if you aren't successful at turning that puck over. At least when you come back into your own end zone, you're forcing the opposition being the checks to the perimeters. Just like that. All of a sudden, Nedved was forced to the outside, and as a result, you're not going to get much of a scoring chance. Gary, if you were coaching a team in this situation, would you go to the trap this early in the game, the conservative style? Absolutely. George Kingston was going to that style right at the start of the game. He wanted to be able to put some pressure on, but then when they realized they weren't going to get possession of the puck ball, they in deep, in deep, then he wanted them to retreat, get into the neutral zone right away. He has respect for the Czech players' skill level and felt that tonight may be the night they could start turning it on. Here's Caberly trying to get loose there at the top of the slot, just dishing it off into the corner. Jager swooping into the play, gets it across. Prohaska couldn't get the shot on goal. Here's Jager. Prohaska is down low. Trying to work loose back in the net. Patera is up there as well. Yager trying to do it himself here along the boards. Patera comes over to help out. Yager bumping along the boards. Ludeman chops it away. And Benda gets it out to center. But here comes Patera back in. Leaves it there for Yager. And Yager is knocked down. Puck fired in there by Cadillac. Yager giving chase along the boards. He's given a bump. Caberly clears it up. Patera shooting from a sharp angle. He was in tight as well. And Joseph Heitz makes the stop and hangs on to it with 9.05 to go in the first period. See, there's no better team to trap against than the Czechs right now. For the reason being is that you know you're going to get some turnovers in the neutral zone just because of the way the Czechs have been playing. They don't pass the puck around right now. They're a very capable team of doing that, Paul, but they have been trying to do it each man. One man at a time, they have been trying to go through every team that they played in this tournament. And so they weren't going to do anything differently, I didn't think, tonight coming into it. And already they've been doing that, turning over the puck. Germans have taken advantage of it. Shots on goal, 7-5 to five so far, favoring Germany. And the score is 3 to nothing. The puck goes up out of play there, and we get another stoppage. If you're coaching a team in that situation, I don't know if you ever have, but where guys start trying to do it themselves individually all the time, is there anything you can do to counter it, or is it just basically out of your hands? Well, oftentimes your teams in the National Hockey League may start to do that on you, but so often it's when you're down by two or three goals and they're trying to individually get something going. But this hockey club has been doing it that way right from the drop of the puck in game number one. The Czechs, that is. Rachinsky after it along the boards. Number 25 for the Czech Republic. Knocked away. Eric Goldman with it. Shovels it up around the side. Hagen gets there. Clears it outside the blue line. Doucette couldn't pick it up for the Germans. Rumerick looking for it. Now it's knocked down. Robert Law forging his way to the corner. Almost got that puck in front of the net. Reichel was wide open. Now Reichel. Going for the front of the net. Sikora couldn't get it on goal. Netch Cash clears it up. Rachinsky giving chase. Gets over there along with Hagen. And it's just fired by Sikora and all the way down the ice. Netch Cash back to tag it up. And icing is called on the Germans. Germany is leading 3 0. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey. Well, what Ludy Bukash, the Czech coach, and his assistant Slava Lenner have got to be telling their players on the bench right now is the fact that, look, we've just got to keep working hard out there and stay as units and see if we can't score a goal because this German team may fall apart after half of a game. And I say that just based on talent level, Paul. There's a huge talent difference between these two teams. Oh, uh, I mean, the Germans outmatched in every game when you, when you look at just the talent pool. Scores! Yeah, like I said, it's 4 nothing. Thomas Brandel. Man for man, they may be outmatched, but as a team, the Germans are firing on all cylinders. It's 4 nothing. 
Czechs are asleep in their own end. Just defensively, they're not moving around very well, and Turek hasn't made great saves for them either. Thomas Brandel, who was, was expected, even though he's young, to be a good offensive player, hasn't been able to come up with a point coming into this hockey game. All of a sudden, he got a big one right there. He got a hold of that puck, and he just smacked it. And that is it for goaltender Roman Turek. The MVP at the World Championship for the Czech Republic, the World Champion Czech Republic, and that's all for Turek in this game. Peter Brescia coming in off the bench. Well, all eyes today, really, and all the talk was on Olaf Kolzig, and why isn't he playing for the German team? Who would have thought that it would be Roman Turek that would be chased out of his cage very early in a hockey game with four goals on him with still almost eight minutes to play in the first period. Unbelievable. We were talking during the last commercial break about the Czech Republic, pardon me, the German upset of Canada at the World Championship. Uh, they've shocked Canada 5-1 to one in that tournament. But, I mean, you hit on an excellent point. Well, the point being that they weren't faced with the huge talent levels that this Czech team has out there. You take a look at these players, the Robert Reichel and the Peter Nedved and Yar uh, Yaramir Yager and keep on going. This is a very talented Czech team. This is just unbelievable. Here comes Yager up along the boards, trying to spark a comeback. Yager takes the pass, shoots. That's stopped by Heiss. Pepe did his job. Off the boards, Caverly went after it. He'll catch up with it out center. Nedved working it across. Patera across for Yager. Pass was just behind him. He lunges at it. And play is whistled down. A penalty coming up. It's going to be a hooking call. And that was a pretty good way to look at the offense for the Czechs, too. They have had extreme difficulty Number being 10, able to put a pass on the stick of their teammates. Their passes have been behind. Too often they haven't even got a pass away in the first place. There you see the penalty. The man going to the penalty box, Pika. And Prohaska was injured actually a few shifts ago. He was on the bench, and now it's obvious that he's off to the dressing room. He was looking a little woozy, and they had an ice pack on the back of his neck on the bench. Reemed Pika in the penalty box. And the Czech Republic with its first power play of the hockey game. 7.09 to go in the first period. Germany is leading this game 4 to nothing. If the Germans win, they move on to the next round. And what a shocker that would be. I think the general consensus is fair to say heading into this World Cup tournament. People figured coming out of the European pool, the Germans would be the odd men out. Here comes Hammerlick. Hammerlick up to the line, looking towards the slot. Long moving up there. Polik out as well. Back at the blue line. Reichel. Polik trying to get loose in front. Here's Reichel. They work it back and forth. Height stopped that. Rebound in front. Holik couldn't get to it. Rebound was cleared into the corner. Rachinsky. Back for Reichel. Up for Rachinsky, and it went up off his glove and over the glass. 121 to go on the power play. Well, the Germans have had plenty of practice killing penalties because in the first two hockey games in this tournament, and that's what really lost them the hockey game. And they ended up taking some bad penalties in both hockey games and allowing power play goals scored against them. They've yeah. got to stay out of the penalty box. Five on five, they'll be all right in this game by the looks of it. I guess turnabout is fair play, but uh, yeah, you're right. It, the total opposite in this game, the Germans running into penalty trouble early the last time out and late in their first game. Here's Nedved. Tried to center it. Yager crashing up there, and he gave his man a knock but couldn't pick up the puck. 103 to go on the power play. And Cadillac has to hustle hard because he had Rurik watching him. Up around the boards. Caverly will start things out with 50 seconds left in the power play. 4-0, Germany leading this game. The loser is finished. The winner advances to the next round. Nedved drops it off. Puck cleared cross ice. Jager going hard after it. Here's Nedved intercepting that. Gets it out to Patera. Back to the line for Caverly. Comes across. Cadillac fired that one wide of the mark. Patera after it. Here's Jager. Jager to Nedved. 
and couldn't get a good shot away, couldn't get any shot away, really, and the puck cleared down the ice with 18 seconds to go on the power play. Here's Yager, moves it up ahead, Nedved coming in, Yager storming in on goal, looking to get it in front, Yager and Nedved up there as fresh power play units come out now for the checks, everybody that is except Yager and Nedved. They've been out there virtually the whole man advantage. Nedved trying to knock it loose. Long will pick it up. Reichel fires it up there. Yager trying to knock it down. The penalized player is back on. Look at the crowd down in front of Heiss. They try to get it out in front of the goal. This is Long. Takes the scenic route all the way in front. Reichel moving up there, dipping and diving. Rolls it right across in front of the net. And Nedved couldn't convert in the pass. He'd been knocked down. Brando shoots, rebound, knocked along the boards. Brando's got one, he almost had another there. Ruchinski fires that one, deflected into the corner. Stefan, for the Germans, gets it up along the boards and is just chopped out by Benda. Good play by Benda, he took the check in order to get that puck out into safety. Reichel tried to hit Ruchinski, broken up. Here comes Benda with Ustorp. He shoots, and that was tipped up over the glass. And out of play, Nets Cash got his stick on it. Good chance for Ustorp as the Germans keep on flying, leading 4-0. The Germans are leading by a score of 4-0, out shooting the Czech Republic 10-9. Peter Brisa in goal now for the Czechs. Four goals chasing starter Roman Turek. Baranek goes after it. Here's Height. Height clearing it up. Bende down into the corner. Nets cash checked him. McKay tried to center it out in front of the net. McKay, Bende, and Ustorp. A dangerous line for the Germans. Here's Bende back in the net. Almost picked it up there from Michael Sikora. In over the blue line, Kuchera cuts across, but offside is called on the checks. 3.34 to go in this first period, and Germany with a 4 to nothing lead. Kuchera was hanging onto the puck way too long, and Brannick ended up going offside. Well, the Germans killed off that power play attempt by the Czechs. It wasn't pretty by any means. They were kind of running around, but they got the job done, and that's the important thing for George Kingston's hockey club. Motivation, their energy levels, they are extremely high right now. They are dominating in the offensive zone when it comes to just out-muscling the Czechs. The Czechs may have just taken these guys a little too lightly. Kunse after it along the boards. He's knocked down. Patera centers it in front. Yager cutting up there, almost flipped it home in the backhand. Yager and Nedved seeing loads of ice time late here in this first period. Sensing perhaps that maybe they can spark this Czech team. Nedved comes out of that crowd. A weak backhand shot just tipped wide by Yager. Caverly chopping at it. Able to keep it in back at the blue line. Up for Patera. He'll have to contend with Kunse. Nedved up there to steal it to Yager. Yager, look at him handle that puck. Throws it across for Caverly. Caverly clears it up. Nedved couldn't get it. Doucette gets it up around the boards. Knocked down by Caverly. Here's Cadillac. Throws it across for Yager. And Yager will carry it in again. Tried to throw it up towards the goal. Cadillac coming up. Tapped up ahead there by Weber to Rachinsky. This is Rachinsky winding his way to the line. He's got some room down the left side. Cuts in. Rachinsky still up there, but couldn't hang on to it. Well, he didn't have anyone with him, Paul. It was a one-on-four situation for Rachinsky. He was skating as hard as he could, looking to give it to somebody. There was nobody with him. Here's Long. Across to Hammerlick. And Heiss will stop that. Here's Meyer. Meyer down into the corner. Rachinsky up there forechecking for the checks. Couldn't get it. 137 to go in the first period. Here comes Heck. Jokan Heck drops it back. 
Dreisel into the corner. Pika going towards the front of the goal. This is Hammerlick now for the Czech Republic. Beaver gets it up ahead. Caverly in front. Tapped on goal. Big stop by Heiss. Baranek and Long flashing in towards the goal. And Pepe gets the Pepe here in his home rink. What a great save on his part. And what a great save at an incredibly important time. A minute 18 to go in this first period of play. And the Czechs with their best scoring opportunity. And Pepe Heist just took it away from them. Big stop on Joseph Baranek. Teaming up there with Robert Long on the break. 118 to go in the first period. Baranek battling away after it. Here's Holik. Tapped away from him on the lunging effort from Brandel. Here's Baranek. Buck really rolling on him. Ricocheted up off the boards. Knocked down. Smacked on goal by Lupzig. Rebound in front. Big stop. Lupzig another shot. That almost went in. Breezy got a piece of it. May have had some help from the post. Lupzig battered that one on goal from point blank range. Michael Sikora sends it up around the boards. Polik cross ice for Baranek. He'll snap it down into the corner. 37 seconds to go in the opening period. Here's Goldman. Germany leading this game four to nothing. Leipzig picks it up. Finds himself surrounded there by Czechs. Holik up towards the blue line. Nowhere to go. He just dumps it in. There's not a hockey mind in the world that would have given you a plug nickel on a bet that Germany would be up four nothing against this Czech team after the first period of play. Benda with a long shot that's knocked away by Brisa. Not many would have taken that bet, but that is exactly the situation. The first period comes to a close. The Germans scoring four goals. The first one, two minutes and 24 seconds in, and they lead it by a score of four to nothing after one. World Cup of Hockey live at the intermission is brought to you by Pepsi Stuff. People who drink it, get it. Ends October 31st. Now, just like I was saying off the top of the show, just like I was saying off the top of the show, you want to go with your third string goaltender and still a little nationalistic pride, then rock the checks for four goals in the hey, first. This keeps going the way it's going. George Kingston's coming over. He's coming right here to the studio, and he goes, "Where's the guy that was calling us house league?" No, but you know what? The only analogy that perhaps I could equate it to is they were giving equal time for their goaltenders. Only the goalie has been far, by far the superior goaltender for Germany, but yet they go with Mr. Heiss. Hey, and the goaltending it hasn't even been an issue like You're right. the, the, hey heist made a couple of good saves in the period but a complete blowout right now germany over the, the czech republic roman Turek didn't look good none of the czechs looked very good and the complete disorganization individual play and everything else and i'll talk about a little later about why this happens to a team and why in particular it's happening to the czech team but complete and utter Abject failure at this point for the Czechs. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's looking good on me, too, isn't it? Uh, Who would have thunk it? What we'll do is we'll take a short break here. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey on TSN. Stay tuned. There is a girl being born in America, and somebody will tell her she is beautiful, and somebody will tell her she is strong. Somebody will tell her she's precious. And somebody will say she is tough. There's a girl being born in America. And someone will give her a doll. And someone will give her a ball. And then someone will give her a chance. Playing in that series, I think people thought, gosh, she looks like she's skating fine. His knee looks all right. If you look at that team, it was a pretty good hockey team. <laughs> you really didn't uh, have to do as much <laughs> with that team as, as uh, you had to do and were expected to do when you go back to your club team.
Welcome back to our World Hockey Control Studio. Tonight, Canada will try to go to 2-0 and oh in the North American pool as they take on the Americans in Philadelphia. But some bad news for this Canadian team. Yeah, the line that looks so good, Primo, Lindros, and Brendan Shanahan, is obviously going to be broken up tonight because Brendan Shanahan will not be able to play because of a one-game suspension. Game against the Russians, C-Mac gave an elbow or a butt end. Shanahan said it was a butt end. Shanahan reacted very angrily to it, gave the big swipe, was reviewed by Brian Burke, NHL Senior Vice President, and as a result, Shanahan has uh, been given a one-game suspension. Meanwhile, C-Mac ends up with a broken orbital bone, and I believe he is gone for the tournament there. Shannon saying, I got a hit right in the throat with the butt end, responded angrily, and I don't think there's any argument there. there was, I was surprised at the time that he didn't get five-minute major for swinging the stick like that. He'll have to take his one game, and Canada goes into a big game, a physical game against the U.S. without one of their best physical players. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see who Canada throws into the lineup. Uh, word is that Pat Verbeek is the most likely of replacements. It is a tough break for Brendan Shanahan. It was a reactionary move on his part. He scored a big goal in that opening game, but as Bob said, he'll now sit down. Our David Pratt got a chance to talk to him. Thanks, Darren. Late last night, the word came down that Brendan Shanahan was not going to be in the lineup tonight. Talk about a kick in the head. Yeah, it's bad news. You know, this had a good time in the first game, and uh, I think our line played well, and I uh, was really looking forward to this game against the Americans here in this new arena. Surprised that the suspension came down, or do you look at it more as politics more than anything else? Well, I, I did a bad thing, so I guess, you know. Uh, but there were a lot of bad things in that game, and uh, yeah. this is the only suspension that came out of it. I think that's what the surprise is. I guess so, but, you know, a player got hurt, so, uh, you know, on the one hand, I, I was surprised after the game when there was a lot of talk about it because I felt it was a pretty chippy game all the way around, but. Um, after when I heard the end result, I wasn't too surprised that uh, people were looking for action. Let's talk about this game. It's going to be difficult to watch it for, for a change uh, because you will be in the press box. Yeah, it's no fun watching games, especially these ones, because they're all so important. But, uh, I mean, still around Robin round here, so, uh, you know, at least uh, I'll get another game in before the playoff round starts, and uh, I'll try and uh, hopefully not miss a beat and get back uh, on track. Oh, I still want to stick with the suspension thing for a little bit. Uh, you take a look at the Larianov uh, two-hand slash to Eric Lindros. And nothing comes of that, and yet uh, here you are uh, ready to sit out a game. Well, again, it seems in the NHL that, uh, you know, we went by NHL rules, and they, they look at a guy's injury more than the intent. I think uh, Larianov's intent yeah. was to uh, take Eric out of the tournament. Yeah. Uh, it was a full wind-up, and uh, certainly... Uh, it, it, warrants at least a review if not a suspension. I think the fear that Canadian hockey fans have is that it sends a message to this American team of what will and will not be tolerated. Well, you know, all we can worry about, we can't worry about the politics. All we can worry about is playing hockey. We got enough depth to replace any player on this team, so um, the game will go on tonight. Everybody, uh, hopefully, will have a great game. We'll win it, and we're right back on track, and we're worrying less about the politics. The Russian coach, he can talk politics all he wants. That's, that's the old game. Right now, we're just concentrating on what goes on on the ice. What does the team have to do to beat the Americans? Um, it's going to be a real physical game, a highly emotional game. I think a big key is going to be staying more disciplined, um, not retaliating, uh, spending less time in the penalty box, especially teams have been uh, you know, really important so far in this tournament. Well, enjoy your limited time in the press box. Don't eat the food, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing you in Ottawa. Okay, All right. Thanks. Brendan Shanahan from Team Canada who will be sitting out tonight. Now let's get back to World Cup Hockey Control. Thanks very much, David. So it's Canada and Philadelphia this evening as they face the Americans. Uh, their exhibition series, it was 1-1. And I think it should be duly noted that in that first game of the two exhibition games that they had played, Brendan Shanahan, one of the premier power forwards in the National Hockey League, and Keith Kachuk, the same can be said for him. The two twains met in the corner. They dropped the gloves, and away they went. And I, I, Canada is going to miss his physical presence in I Shanahan. did a bad thing. I like yeah. the way you put it. That was there pretty was, good. Yeah, there was not a lot of remorse in his part. But you could you clearly tell <coughs> it was reactionary on his part, albeit he deserved the one-game suspension, and he's got it. Exactly, and you can say all you want about Larry, Larry Onoff slashing Eric Lynn Ross, but say la vie, that's the way it goes. Now, what will Canada do in the absence of Brendan Shanahan? I do believe that Claude Lemieux will likely be reinserted on the line with Primo and Lynn Ross. The, that line played together against the Russians in a pre-tournament game and still looked pretty good. And Pat Verbeek, who was a coach's decision, coach's decision scratch from the opening game of the, the actual tournament, will likely go back on a line with Messier and Verbeek. And what we're hearing from the city of brotherly love, although I don't think there'll be a lot of brotherly love on the ice tonight, is, is that Curtis Joseph 
He's expected to get the start again. We thought perhaps that maybe Martin Brodeur would go in this well, game. I, th I think some people were surprised a little bit when Curtis Joseph got the start to open the tournament against the Russians. And a lot of people, myself included, thought maybe that Martin Brodeur would get inserted in game two against the Americans. But as of right now, Curtis Joseph's been uh, designated as the starter for tonight's game. And I suppose Glenn Sather's looking at it and saying, hey, he's a good goaltender and he's my goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers. And if he gets on a roll and, and gets very hot, there's no reason why he can't go all the way. So at uh, this point, that's uh, the decision they've seen to have made. Yeah, and he made some great saves in late in that second period when the Russians were pressing to take the lead. We will take a short break. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey here on TSN. Stay Tune, we're back in a moment. World Cup of Hockey live at the intermission is brought to you by Pepsi Stuff. People who drink it, get it. Ends October 31st. The period, and it was all Germany in that first period. Great goal. Stefan Ustorp goes to Jurgen Rumrich. He makes no mistake. And that makes it two to nothing for Germany. The play of the period is brought to you by Gillette's $250,000 Triple Play Challenge at a retailer near you. Bobby, we got to get you one of those outfits. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey on TSN. By Gillette, Mirka Ludeman opens the scoring. It's a power play goal at the 224 mark. That makes it one to nothing Germany. We're thinking, oh, they're off to a great start, but. Lo and behold, they tally again. Jürgen Rumrick, as you saw in our play of the period, made it two zip for Germany, and they just kept coming. Jan Benda, three to nothing. It gets worse. Four zip. The Czech Republic completely outplayed. Jürgen Rumrick, uh, as aforementioned, made it two to nothing. Uh, four zip. Thomas Brendel with the final goal in that period. Jan Benda also scored really was a dynamic period for Germany as they go on to rout the Czech Republic in 20 minutes of play. But there's still 40 minutes remaining. Anything can happen. Let's head out to Garmisch. Here's Paul and Gary. Well, this is probably oversimplifying things a little bit, but what the heck, we don't have all that long. Uh, this is a great example of what team play can do, even though there may be less talent against a team of talented individuals not playing as a team. Well, the Germans have come out there tonight, Paul, and they're just extremely motivated. I did. I knew the chicken and the ribs were really good at the Barbie barn, but I didn't know they were that good because that's what George Kingston promised his team if they, in fact, would win this hockey game and go to Montreal. Meanwhile, the Czechs are just awful out there, folks. They're terrible. In their own end zone, the goaltending's been bad, but the players in front of them have just been equally as bad. I would never have thought this score would be this. By the way, uh, the Barbie Barn, for those of you who don't know, it's a somewhat of a culinary landmark, if I can use the term, in Montreal. Uh, George Kings is going to take all the guys there if they move on to the next round. Figures you'd use some kind of a rib analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, gentlemen. Probably uh, a vegetarian or something? Pretty close to it, I think. But he's enjoying this hockey game, and so are German hockey fans. Uh, we can't overstate enough the atmosphere over there in Germany as well. Like I said before, it's a big beer hall, uh, basically with an ice surface, and things are going great for this team, but there's still a lot of hockey to be well, played. Well, there's a lot of hockey to be played, and under normal circumstances, you'd say the Czechs are a team that are more than capable with the offense they've got of rallying, but they do have a problem, and they've had it from the drop of the puck, actually before the drop of the puck of this tournament. And the problem starts with the Czech Ice Hockey Federation. That's where it is. The Czech Ice Hockey Federation in the past used to put together the teams, the national teams, and they had no problem. They did it reasonably well. That was before all the Czech players were playing in the National Hockey League. Now that they all are over there in the National Hockey League, they have less control. They don't know how the Swedes and the Finns have adapted very well to having their best players leave and still come back and fit into the system. Czech Ice Hockey Federation and the Russian Federation, for that matter, are not strong enough federations to be able to have a system in place and the economic problems they've had are exacerbate the situation and when the players come back there's not a system in place that they have to fit into so the players start calling the shots we want to do it this way we want to do it this way the difference between the russians and the czechs and why the russians are reasonably successful at it and the czechs aren't is because they've got a guy like uh, vyacheslav fetisov igor larionov they've been around the block they're veterans and they do what's in the best interest those guys very much so are controlling the whole way this Russian team operates. And as a result, they know what's in the best interest of Russian hockey and what it takes for a team like the Russians to come in and compete against Canada and the U.S. The Czechs don't have anybody like that. Their best players are Jarmar Jager and Peter Nedved, young stars in the National Hockey League 
who come in and their attitude sort of is, well, come on, let's play. Let's do it my way. Let's play. And there isn't anybody strong enough in the federation or the coaches or anybody else to bring all these guys into line and say, this is the way we do things in Czech hockey. Everybody come and do it. And if you don't like it that way, then too bad, take a hike. They're not strong enough to do that. Neither the Russians, but Larionov and Feder uh, and Fetisov pull it together and give that team some glue. Uh, you know what? That's great analysis. And that's exactly the reason why the Russians are being successful. And the Czech Republic's down four to nothing after the first period of play. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll drop the puck. Stay tuned. Household names in Germany now. Yeah, maybe not. Sniped but one. Sniped th one. <laughs> you did snipe one, in fact. Uh, if it was the World Cup of Soccer, we'd heavily favor the Germans. This is the World Cup of Hockey, and they're faring very well. Let's return to Garmisch. Here's Paul and Gary. Well, just to sort of put this into perspective for you in terms of the probable impact on the German hockey if this German team could go on and win. They have won a couple of bronze medals at the Olympics, the most recent in 1976. In the Canada Cup, the team has only played in one, did not win a game in that tournament. At the World Championships, the last four finishes in order, seventh place, ninth place, ninth place, fifth place, and sixth place. This would be big. Well, turn things around, take a look at the Czech team right now. The Czech team that won the gold medal this past year, the 96 world champions. And Carl Gut, the president of the Czechoslovakian Ice Hockey Federation, asked a security guard near the end of the first period to take him back to his hotel. He had had enough. He had been humiliated. Peter Brescia coming on in relief of the starter, Roman Turek. Turek giving up four goals, and then he was chased at the 12.07 mark. And we are all set to go here in period number two. And here comes Yager trying to spark the comeback. Yager shoots, and that is stopped by Heiss. Joseph Heiss, the hometown goaltender here for the German team, born in Garmisch and playing in front of the hometown fans and excelling so far. Here's Nedved. Yager. Yager gets it out in front. Nedved was going after it, lost his footing. Here's Cadillac. Flips it up, intended for Yager, knocked down by Ustorf, who'll start it back. Stefan Ustorf in over the blue line, trying to drive his way through. A one on three. Don't like those odds. And it didn't pan out as they tie it up along the boards. No whistle. Puck pops loose. Bend is up there working away. Benda spins off his check, picks it up along the boards. Nedved looking for it. Chasing after Goldman. Puck chopped up. Golf back in by Caverly. And both teams make some changes early in the second period. Four to nothing. Germany is leading. Here comes Goldman. Long shot. Off the boards. Fired on goal. And a big stop there by Turek. Pardon me, by Breezia. Rachinsky shoots. Heist stopped that one. Little, yeah. little end to end action here, and the Czechs have got some abilities, folks. If they can score one goal, they could find that they could get back into this hockey game because they are, as we've said many times, a much more talented team. But heart and hard work is where it's at right now for the Germans. Long in along the boards, drops it off. Reichel cuts in front. Reichel shoots. That's knocked away. Rebound up back of the net. Rochinski up after it. Couldn't get it. And it is scooped all the way down the ice by Dreisel. And icing is called in the Germans. 17.55 to go in this second period. 4-0. Germany leading. The Germans would have gone into the first intermission on an extreme high. And they'd be able to carry that into the second period. That ability to stick together in the dressing room. Having some confidence. On the other hand, the Czech team in the dressing room in the first intermission should have been at a very all-time low. That should have been an embarrassment level for them. Something that they could use to climb out of. The problem then becomes for the Czech team, who are their leaders in their hockey club that end up trying to get them out of this big hole that they're in? And that has been the question, and there have been few answers. 
Stefan clears it up. Leipzig hustling up into the corner. He pulled down Hammerluck on his way in. Hammerluck's been a pretty big disappointment. He hasn't shown much in this tournament at all. He should be, and especially in a game like tonight, he should be out there with all this extra ice going end to end. Mind you, he was a bit of a disappointment in the first round series between Tampa and Philadelphia, thinking back to that as well. But he had a big regular season. Holik fires one. He's had a couple of big regular seasons back to back, really coming into his own in that regard. Hammerlick tried to knock it down. Puck rolled up. Back up ahead to Baranek. Here comes Baranek, twisting in over the blue line. Up ahead for Holik. Holik along the boards, weighing his options. Tried to work it up for Kuchera. That's knocked down. Kuchera still up there. And Holik. And the puck bounced outside the line. Dieter Hagen trying to catch up to it. Pestering Cadillac, who turns away from him. Baranek, long pass up to Yager. Comes to the line with Patera. Steers it across. Nedved was breaking in, but offside is called on the Czech Republic. 16.43 to go in the second period. You're watching the World Hockey Championship. TSN is proud to present the 1996 World Cup. World Cup of Hockey and a big day. Double header for you in TSN. And then, of course, Canada plays tonight. And we'll be back tomorrow with the final game in the European pool. And it will be for first place and a first round playoff bye between Finland and Sweden from Stockholm. What a battle that will be on the ice and in the crowd. Huge rivalry between those two hockey powers. Offside called in the checks. The Czechs are really having difficulties just being able to carry that puck inside of the German zone. Yarmir Jager ends up going offside. There was a hesitation at the blue line. And again, this Czech team is still out of sync and finding and trying desperately to find a way to get back into sync. Maybe it's not even back because they've never been there. Not in this tournament. And yeah, they've really had, I mean, looking back, I would say one really good period. And that, and that wasn't even a period, though, that they were in sync, but it was just a good effort on their part with some scoring opportunities. And they played well in three zones. But still, as a team, they didn't perform well as far as passing the puck and playing good defense. That was the first period of the last game against Sweden in Prague. Coming in over the line, Benda centers it in front, just chopped wide by Usdor. He was tied up on the way through after Benda got it out in front to him. Puck flipped up to the corner, Rachinsky up after it. Rachinsky gets it out in front. Reichel shoots, that was tipped wide. Fired up off the boards by Height and down the ice. Nets cash. Nets cash rings it up along the boards. Polik back there trying to get it. Dreisel checking him. Here's Baranek. Had it chopped away. Dreisel looking for it. But Baranek in the second effort. Charging up to center. Hits the blue line. Chops it down into the corner. Baranek trying to get it out in front for Holik. Kuchera up there as well. Neither can come up with it. Now Kuchera's got it in the neutral zone. Holik steps in over the blue line. Looking for some room. Can't get that puck in on goal. And back come the Germans. Pika lost that puck. Hammerlick clears it back ahead. Holik steps in. Holik in front of the net. Slid it across for Baranek. And he just failed to negotiate contact. Holik fires it in. Baranek centers it. That's fired wide of the net. Good job by Daniel Kunse, Kunse in front of the net on Baranek. Baranek fires that one into a crowd. And this is Heck starting back. Jokan Heck out to center. Baranek picks his pocket. Pika tying up Baranek. Checks with a bit of spark, but so far can't get it in behind Heiss. 4 0, Germany leading. Jager muscles his way up into the corner. Patera working up there with him. Jager going hard along the boards, trying to come up with that puck. Lupsig with it. Knocked away from him. Here's Jager again. Jager in over the line with Nedved. Patera lunging at it. He and Stefan up along the boards. Stefan coming away with that puck. Here's Jager. Centers it in front. Cadillac picks it up. On the backhand, trying to do something with it. Works it up for Nedved. 
Patera is in front. Yager is down low, back in the net. Height stops that. Patera couldn't get to the rebound. Here's Nedved trying to fish it loose. Patera with Yager down low, gets it to him. Here's Yager, cuts in front, shoots. Height stopped that. And Yager appeared to take a high stick. No one seemed to see it, though. He is heading to the bench as play continues. And Yager over towards the bench as play has finally stopped. Kerry Fraser has called his linesmen in to see whether they saw it. I saw Yager cutting to the net. He had possession of the puck, but I quite honestly didn't see him get a stick in the mouth or in the facial area, but he obviously dropped his gloves and his stick very quickly. You can see him talking to Peter Nedved. Does not look as though he's cut. Well, he had a little bit of blood on his fingers when he had put them up to his teeth. There's Yager. Almost, almost looked the opposite. But it looked as though his visor took the brunt of the impact and maybe the shaft of the stick got him on the chin. Here's another look. But you can see that, watch Yager's stick here. No, prior to that, actually. He was in the battle with Ludeman, who was trying to stop him going to the net. I thought both sticks came up. Yager's stick came up actually before Ludeman's did. And it was those two players that were involved. Thirteen, eighteen to go in the second period. Germany with a four to nothing lead. No scoring yet here in the second. Here's Robert Long. He drops it back. Long shot fired in there by Reichel. Ruchinski hustling up there after it. Here's Doucette. Hagen up to the line. Dieter Hagen along the boards. Back towards the front of the net, just fired wide by Rumrick as he cut in front. Germans really working that puck around. Rumrick had a perfect opportunity to give it to Jason Meyer, who was all alone in front of the net. Could have been a nice little pass out to him. Reichel just fires it in, cross ice. Ruchinski moving up there after it. Ruchinski centers it in front. Long just rolled it wide of the corner. Here's Hammerlick. Beaver. Flips that up to the corner. Kuchera trying to get to it. Now just set. Hacks at it and it goes up over the boards and out of play. Germany leading by a score of 4 nothing. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey. Jan-Mir Jager pleading his case to referee Kerry Frazier. To no avail, it, it usually is. We want to make it perfectly clear. And after pleading his case, Yager has a seat on the bench. Teams at even strength, 12.05 to go, second period. And Germany leading 4-0. Kuchera going after it for the check. Back to the line. Punched in on goal by Weber. And that is held by Joseph Heiss. Heiss was looking around for someone to give it to, but he decided it was better on his behalf to hang on and take the stoppage of play. The Germans would be very happy if they could just hold the lead in this second period, keeping the frustration levels of the Czechs at maybe an all-time high. Maybe that stick in the mouth on the part of Yarmir Yager might get him angry here. As long as he uses the anger with his skill rather than taking a bad penalty through his frustration. Yager delivering a hit there to Ustor. Offside call. 11.40 to go in the second period. You know what probably is more surprising in this hockey game than just the score? 
It's the way that the Germans have been able to physically control the big Czech team. When you take a look at this Czech team, you're looking at guys like Michael Sikor at 6'5", 225 pounds, Jaromir Jagr at 6'3", 208, a guy like Peter Nedved, 6'3", 195 pounds, and the list goes on. A guy like Neskash is 6'1", almost 200 pounds. This is a big Czech hockey club, and it is not a big German team. That's the size of the heart, not the size of the body. The size of the deficit right now is what is killing the Czechs, trailing 4-0 as we approach the halfway point of this hockey game. The Czechs facing elimination from the tournament. Here's Jager, winding around, looking for some room, shoots, and that is grabbed by Heitz, and he hangs onto it. I think Jager's a little angry. We may see the best of Jager in this game to come. He has been very disappointing in this tournament thus far, but he might right now decide that He's angry enough, he's going to take over. The Czechs are hoping so. Peter Nedved was standing in front, but off to the side, so Pepe Heiss could see that puck clearly. And the way that he has played, he hasn't really been tested a great deal, not nearly as much as we figured he would be in the first period, but he's been there when called upon. He faced 12 shots in the first period. A lot of those shots were from the perimeters, though because the Germans did an excellent job in front of Pepe Heiss in the first period of play by playing their positions and forcing the Czechs to the outside. He made one brilliant save on a two-on-one off of Joseph Baranek. And that is his five-star save so far in this game. That was back in the first period. Puck got away there from Brisa. Czech goaltender coming out to try to play it. Parisa coming on in relief of Roman Turek, who started. Brandel after it. Here's Brandel, number seven, trying to hack it loose. Stepping up there with him. Puck loose at the side. They jam away at it. Parisa firing the pad out there. And Lupsig, very persistent, almost tucked it in the short side and kept hammering away. Well, it was quite a while that Lupsig was able to stand there and take a few whacks at it before any Czech player really did much about it. Reichel finally came in and tried to move him out of the way, but there should have been a defenseman there long before that. You could see that Long was the second man, still no defenseman in sight. Lupsig finally gets shoved out. Meanwhile, it was Thomas Brando that really had had the jump. He's had the jump the whole hockey game. Also has had a goal in this game. Peter Brisa was making sure that that skate of his was up tight to the post, trying his best to keep it out. Ben Wadju set up in the faceoff for Germany. And he'll give chase up back of the net. Doucette centers it. Puck fired. Big stop by Brisa as he ripped out the pad on Jurgen Rumrich. Rumrich has one goal in this game, and... An outstanding chance for a second one there, but a great save by Brisa. Jurgen Rumrich has had some good jumps. Of course, all of the Germans have really been on their game tonight. There you see Brisa making the first save, sprawling to try to get that rebound. Jurgen Rumrich, who played in the 96 Worlds, as well as the 92 Olympics, one of the hard-working, grinding types for this German hockey team. Here's Roman Hammerlich for the Czech Republic, starting out. Hagen intercepts, tried to pound that in on goal. Pass up ahead for Baranek. Baranek coming in, got it back out in front, and just knocked wide of the net. Bieber after it. The Germans take a while. When they come back into their own end zone, they take a while before they all of a sudden click in defensively to their position. That's where the Czechs have got to try to take advantage of, is on their counterattack. Once they get inside the offensive zone, they've got to move quickly towards the net. They're taking too much time, allowing the Germans to think and get set up. Nowak clears it back in for Germany. Usdorf moving up there to forecheck. Number 26 for the Germans as the fans whoop it up. Enjoying this 4-0 lead for Germany. Polik down into the corner. Patera slapping at it, but it's cleared out by Usdorf. Cadillac 
to Patera. Caberly clears it ahead. Yager looking for that puck. Here comes Benda. Benda to Usdorf. Fakes a shot. Gets to the outside. Usdorf still. Tried to center it for Benda, but that's broken up by Patera. Nedved up to center. Chipped away from him. Cadillac. Yager with it. Checked by Benda. Yager was trying to lunge it up there to Patera. Yager's frustrated as he goes off to the bench. He was giving that expression like just nothing's going right for him. He doesn't like to lose. Yarmir Yager is a talented hockey player that likes to put on a show. He doesn't like to lose, and he's being humiliated out there. Lead pass up ahead. Nedved was trying to come in, and you could see the frustration on Nedved. He kind of shrugged his shoulders. Thought he should have been hit with a pass. And that's just the kind of tournament it has been for this Czech team. The Czechs have not scored a goal since 16-19 in the third period of the game against Finland. All of the offensive talent on this team. They were shut out against Sweden in their last game and couldn't generate much offense against Finland in game number one. Here comes Robert Long in over the blue line. Long coming up. Can't get the shot on goal. 7.42 to play in this second period. 4-0, Germany leading. Pika after it. Weber at the blue line. Brandel coming in over the line. In front to Heck. Rolled it in on goal, and that is grabbed and held by Frieza. Good chance there for Jochen Heck. And a good long stretch of action has him dancing in the aisles. In the last Olympics, Germany was involved in a shootout in the game against Canada. And 10 million people watched that game and that shootout on television in this country. Roman Hammerlich didn't play that two-on-one very well at all. Brandel put that puck across. That's the opportunity that Hammerlich should have been able to use his offensive abilities, his quickness and speed, and just been able to jump right out there anticipating that pass, and he should have been gone with it. After that big game, with all those people watching, interest in hockey really peaked for the next couple of years here in Germany. And it's been on a little bit of a downslide the last year or so. And they feel a win in this game to move onwards in the tournament could really help spark interest again. Off the draw. Lupsig trying to get towards the front of the net. Back out to the line. Goldman shoots it up there. Lots of traffic down in front of Brisa. Lupsig drops it off there for Stefan trying to curl around in front. He was dumped. Polik hits the blue line. Polik. Fires a shot, had a bead on the short side, but ripped it up off the glass. Here's Brandel starting back. Pass was behind Lupsig. Hammerlick goes after it. Bieber moves it up ahead. Here comes Baranek up to the line. Polik moving up on the play as well. And Baranek relieved of the puck there by Goldman momentarily. Recovers. Baranek trying to get it back. Finally, it's knocked out. Lead pass up ahead. Doucette spinning in there. Can't get the shot on goal. Now it's chopped up. Riza will just grab it. And hold on. With lots of traffic around the goal. Yeah, Breeze is going to hang on every chance he gets, wouldn't you? The team being disorganized in front of him. Not all of them coming back in deep enough to help him out. So he's going to grab that puck every chance he gets. Six twenty-five to play in the second period. No scoring here in this second period. Germany scoring all four of its goals back in the opening frame. There you see Hammerlich just kind of steps aside to allow Breeze the opportunity to see that puck clearly, and that shot obviously was wide of the net. Who sat up to take the face off against Peter Nedved? Yager will pick it up. Yager sending that puck across, just cleared in by Caverly. Nedved moving up after it. Caverly chops at it. That one kind of 
knuckleballs wide of the net. Yager up digging after it. He and Nedved. Puck centered in front, kicked away by Heiss. Caberly fires it up. That was Patera in front who had a whack at it. Nedved to Yager. Patera moving up into the play as well. Yager twisting and turning, just looking for a bit of daylight, a bit of room, and having trouble finding it right now. Yager swings around, centered it across now. Caberly looking. Rolled it right through the traffic in front. Yager with it again. Nedved is in front of the net. Yager trying to come out. Centers it. Nedved couldn't get his stick on the pass. Caberly moves up after it. Not able to keep it in. The lunging effort there by Benoit Doucette got the puck out. I think Benoit Doucette was totally out of gas. Long going for the front of the net. And that is broken up. Big play there by Daniel Kunze to knock that pass away. McKay was popped at center. He looked up and ran into Caberly. McKay back into the play, in front, Benda shoots, fired it wide. Had the open corner and couldn't deliver it on net. Dieter Hagen gave him a perfect pass, Benda just couldn't connect. Long steps in over the blue line. Long gets it up ahead for Ruchinski. Ruchinski looking for Reichel, that's knocked away. Ustorf up to the blue line. Here comes Benda, Ustorf trailing. Benda tried to back it in off of Breeze's leg. That didn't work. 4.35 to play, second period. Germany with a 4-0 lead. Reichel bumped around on that rush. Ustorf trying to come back with it. Ruchinski. Steers it up in the wing. Bieber. Digging up there deep, trying to center it out in front. He does. McKay is there to break it up, but he's got a battle. Get some help from Ludeman, who starts back. Hammerlick back there to get it. Ustorf up watching him. Polik was at the blue line. Couldn't get a stick on that pass. Height tucking it up ahead. 3.50 to play in the period. Here comes Hack in over the blue line. Hack up there with Pika, right in on goal. Loose puck in front of the net, Holik gobbles it up. And the checks come back, things really opening up as Baranek takes the pass offside at the line. 3.35 to go in the second period. The checks down, 4-0. Hey, they are loving it in Garmisch. The flags are waving, the music's playing, and these fans have Barely shut up in the second period. Lots of noise, lots of enthusiasm. Maybe not quite believing what they're seeing here, Paul. The last really momentous occasion for German hockey fans, you have to go back to the 1976 Winter Olympics at Innsbruck, and Germany finished in third place, winning a bronze medal. 20 years ago. Leipzig up there after it. Trying to chop the puck loose. Hammerlick. Getting it out to center. Here's Holik. Chopped off the boards there by Goldman. And offside, Colt. Well, these German players are continuing in this second period with only 250 remaining in this second period to show that roughing. they have still got the jump. They've still got the abilities to outmuscle the Czechs. And a penalty coming up against the Czech Republic. Joseph Baranek has had a seat in the penalty box. So this gives, gives the German team an opportunity even to play a rather defensive power play if they so choose more or less finish up this second period of play that is a roughing call against Baranek Baranek was actually seeing a little bit more ice time than he had really probably felt he was going to get tonight he was going to be designated as a penalty killer and instead he's also been able to get some Pretty regular time out there, five aside. However, they have been going with the three lines as they intended to do. Germany scored a power play goal, 224 into the hockey game, and started the momentum. 
Here comes Hagen in over the blue line. Just set up there with him. McKay as well. Moving in towards the front of the goal. This is McKay up back and then I do a hook up with it. Looking for Desset, gets it to him. Hagen is parked out front. Desset gets it to Hagen. Puck chopped up, Desset loose in front. Waiting, shooting, scores! Set on the power play, and it's 5 nothing Germany. Hey, when you've got a 4 nothing lead, well, forget about the defensive power play. Might as well add one more goal in this hockey game. Peter Brisa got caught making his move a little too soon. Benoit Doucette just made a huge move on Peter Brisa. Just making a great play right here. Watch. It's down to one. Peter Brisa and Benoit Doucette. Doucette was able to use the backhand and put it neatly right up into the corner. You could see that Dieter Hagen was there to congratulate. Doucette on the power play, and it's 5-0 in favor of the Germans. And Germany looking good to move on to the next round over in North America. And the Czechs canceled Czechs. The Germans would really have to fall apart, totally fall apart in the third period in order not to win this hockey game, and that's rather doubtful. Interesting on Benoit Doucette's play. He just made a fantastic move. I talked earlier about the fact that George Kingston motivated his hockey club this morning by offering them that great rib and chicken dinner at the most famous Barbie barn in Montreal. Well, right after Benoit Doucette up that in fact he decided that there's another famous place in Montreal that he was going to take the boys to if in fact they won. We'll just leave that unnamed but that got a great rise out of all the players and I'll tell you what there is tremendous camaraderie on this German team and you need that. You don't have the talent you've got the motivation and the desire out there and the Germans have definitely been the best team by far on the ice tonight. Well, whether or not it was the offer of a good meal and a night in the town that has had them rise to the occasion, or whether it's just one of those things, one <laughs> well, of those we, moments. We joke about the incentive. They didn't need any incentive, just the opportunity, as they said, right from game number one. They wanted to win one hockey game, and for these players to play in this World Cup tournament alone is a tremendous dream come true. Here's Halik coming up, shooting! Right on goal, and that was stopped by Heiss. Baranek was all alone in front, but Kuchera couldn't get it out to him. Now he tries to feed it out. Baranek can't get to the puck. Hometown Heiss, Joseph Heiss. Pepe is the fans chant his name here. And a late hit after the whistle, and Hammerlick is going to go after Brandel. And with good cause on that race to tag it up on the icing play. Well, if I were the German team right now, I wouldn't want to do anything to wake up the Czech team. <laughs> You've got a nice, comfortable 5 nothing lead. You don't need to do this. Randall just came in and slammed Roman Hammerlick into the boards on the, on the call, and why? 44 seconds remaining. I just let the sleeping giant sleep. You never quite know what it might be in a hockey game that would trigger a team that was down. Wake them up and get them going. I've got seven you don't want to get the, uh, that little spark. Two minutes for boarding. I have the uh, big defense. Don't figure, though, when you look at the, the check lineup, the team scores three goals in its first game and is beaten up by Finland to the tune of 7-3. to three. Shut out at home in Prague in the last game against a very good Swedish club. And here in this game, they have yet to score a goal. Now, there's no way you would have even guessed that, despite the fact the team's having trouble. You look down the lineup and you see names like Jager, Nedved, Bonk, loads of talent on there, offensive talent. No, Robert Reichel, I mean, Yuri Slager, and the most noticeable out tonight, Peter Sikora, Martin Straka, and Yuri Slager not in the lineup, but that's how much depth they have in this team. There you see that check one more time. Randall on Roman Hammerlick, and of course, 
that has created a penalty. It's, it's and lots of discussion at the box with referee Kerry Fraser. Pushing and shoving occurred after. You see Weber moving in there to try to break it up. Kerry Frazier and his officiating crew heading back to North America after this game. The final game in the European pool tomorrow in Stockholm will be worked by Dan Meruelli's crew. Two NHL officiating crews over here working the European pool games. Big day in the World Cup today. This game doubleheader first half of a doubleheader on TSN and then Canada in action tonight the tournament really starting to pick up steam and momentum offsetting penalties coming out of all of that to the teams at even strength playing it four on four a little bit of extra room for Yager in front one-handed almost got it in Heiss makes the stop and holds on to it Usdorf was Really battling Jager. And there's a penalty coming up on the Germans for exactly that. Obstruction called on number 12. Well, Black. Mirko Two Ludeman. Minutes. Well, he was hanging number on 12. to Yarmir Jager. There you see he was doing his best to hitchhike and try to stop Jager. And that's a tough task in itself. You can see Jager maintained his balance and still with one hand got off the shot. Yeah, pardon me, I initially thought that was Usdorf who was checking him. It was Ludeman who draws the penalty. Usdorf was lunging back into the play, trying to help goaltender Joseph Heitz smother a rebound. 33 seconds remaining here in this second period. Jager setting things up with Patera. He knows that there's time out there. Four on three right now. Lots of open ice. Watch Yarmir Jager. And a big chance to get... Just a bit, just a tiny bit of momentum for the Czechs before they head off to the dressing room, and this period ends. Trailing five to nothing against Germany and facing elimination from the tournament. Here's Cadillac back at the line, works it across. Cadillac, top of the point, up to Jager. 14 seconds left in the period. Cadillac shoots. That was knocked away by Heiss. Not much on that shot. And the puck just bounced down the ice. That'll do it. That will do it for period number two. And when the third period gets underway, the Czechs will be on the power play. They will have a four on three man advantage for the first minute and 17 seconds. Five nothing Germany through two. 72 Summit Series, the crowning achievement in our nation's hockey history. Team Canada arguably featured the greatest group of players ever assembled. Phil Esposito, Guy Lafleur, Bobby Hull, and yes, even Bobby Orr, bad knees and all. Canada reached the best two out of three final against Czechoslovakia. The first game was a 6-1 blowout for Canada, but the second game was one for the books at the Montreal Forum, with the game tied at four in overtime. Daryl Sittler stormed down the left wing and made his legendary move to end the game and give Canada the win in the inaugural Canada Cup. He said, what you do is you hesitate, just hesitate, skate wide and slide it in you'll have the whole net so he's going down just like i had drawn it he fakes the thing Drizilla comes sliding out he walks in and slides it in i was more surprised than anybody five years later in 1981 the second tournament unraveled canada had an unblemished record in round robin action but that meant nothing in the one game final as the soviets dominated in what was a resounding victory over the line, here's a backhand shot, they score as Bulikov got in on the backhand and picked the far side, and it's 7-1. to one. This marked the first and last time anyone without a Maple Leaf would accept the Canada Cup. Danelli after that puck, Danelli ducks the check, back on the blue line, here's another shot, The semi 
semifinal win over the Soviets was the pinnacle of the tournament for Canada as they went on to sweep Sweden in the final. We learned our lesson in 81. It doesn't matter how well you play throughout the end of the tournament, throughout the tournament, it's uh, it's the end what counts. And the end is that we won the Canada Cup and we we got it back to Canada. In the 87 Cup, Canada once again met its arch rival, the Soviets, in the final. Facing a must-win situation in Game 2, Canada's prayers were answered by Mario Lemieux. A second 6-5 score in overtime, but the best was yet to come. Lemieux poking at the center. Lemieux ahead to Gretzky. And Murphy with him on a two-on-one by Lemieux. And on goal. He scores! He scores! Four years later, Gretzky was forced to watch the final due to injury, and the young guns like Lindros stepped up to fill the void. Bill Ranford was sensational, leading all goaltenders with his superb net minding. Game two of the final was in Hamilton, and Canada proved too much for the Americans. Some outstanding memories from the former Canada Cup. They'll try to make more as this World Cup progresses. We will take a short break. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey on TSN. Benoit Doucette. You'll see him in front of the net. The transplanted Canadian on the power play looking for a rebound. And he gets it. Nice looking move. He scores to make it 5 to nothing for Germany. That's our play of the period. And it is brought to you by... New Mono Ultra Sealant, the best sealant for all your caulking needs. We'll take another time out here as they strike up the band. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey. Remco Benoit Doucet with the goal for Canada. I should say the transplanted Canadian. And look who picks up a helper as well. McKay also happens to be a Canadian boy, along with uh, Dieter Hagen. Uh, the veteran of the German national team. He scores at 7.45 mark. Power play marker, 5 to nothing for Germany as they continue their dominance over the Czech Republic. The shots on goal, not that significant. 20 for Germany, 16 for the Czech Republic, but the Czechs really haven't had any glorious scoring opportunities. Germany has also taken advantage of their power play opportunities as they have gone one for one. Let's return to Garmisch. Here's Paul and Gary. We're about uh, 20 minutes or so away, 20 minutes of game time from one of the biggest upsets in German hockey history, uh, one of the biggest upset games that I'll have ever seen. What does George Kingston have to do, tell his team, looking ahead to the third period to pull it off? Well, Paul, his team right now in the dressing room is probably about um, 10 times higher than you and I were at lunch sitting up on top of the mountain, eating today, looking down over the valley. The players in the dressing room right now You've got to control their enthusiasm. These guys are going to be just on cloud nine thinking that, holy moly, we're going to be able to win this hockey game and go off to North America. That was just a pipe dream for them coming into this tournament. So George has got to make sure, he doesn't want to take their enthusiasm away, but on the other hand, he's got to make sure that they play one great disciplined game. They've got plenty of goals to score right now that they have already scored to win this hockey game. Defense is where it's all at. Yeah, and 2020 uh, hindsight, but the controversial decision to go with Joseph Heiss, the hometown goaltender in this game, rather than Olaf Kolzig, the NHL goaltender right now, really a non-factor. No, it sure isn't. In fact, Heiss has done what he's been asked to do tonight. Goaltending hasn't been a factor. And the interesting thing is that it sets Olaf Kolzig up to go back and play on a North American-sized ice surface, which he's accustomed to playing on. Yeah, Heiss looking good on the ice as he works in a shutout. The German team will do that in the third period. Okay, thanks very much, gentlemen. The streets of Garmisch looking lively today, as is their German hockey team. We'll be back in a moment. You don't want to get Q carried away or too excited and start talking about chicken and rib dinners in Montreal just yet. You want to wrap up this last 20 minutes. And it's very easy at this point. With a five-goal lead, you can just trap, 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 trap the whole time. I don't think you're going to see a German player advance beyond the offensive blue line. You make sure you've got three, four, five guys back all the time, and the Czechs are just going to continue to be frustrated because they've tried to play like individuals the whole tournament. It's too late now to try and put the team game together at this late date. They'll continue to try like indiv play like individuals, and they'll continue to be frustrated, and it looks like the Germans are on their way. And what did I tell you? Josef Heiss, 
Look out. That's He's right. number one in Germany. The host uh, leaguers are doing well today, aren't <laughs> they're they? They're doing very well indeed. Uh, time now for the third period. Let's return to Garmisch. Peter Brescia, Roman Hammerlick, Yaramir Jager, Peter Nedved go down the list. It is gut check time. Last call for the Czech Republic in this tournament. Trailing five to nothing. They've been unimpressive in the first couple of games of the tournament. Unimpressive tonight. They have one period to try to write many things and they will start this third period off on the power play with a four on three man advantage. I'm Paul Romanoff with Gary Green at the ice rink in Garmisch Parkenkirchen here in Germany. Home game for the German national team and the hometown crowd just relishing in its team's success so far. Caberly to Jager. Back to Caberly. Fakes his shot. Over to Cadillac. Caberly shooting it. That stop. Loose in front. Jager lunging after it. Patera as well. And it's cleared up. Dreisadel just threw that puck down right through the big hole on the ice. Took the pressure off. Here comes Jager. Sliding it down low. He'll set up towards the front of the net. Cadillac with it. Jager off to the side. Takes it. Back out for Cadillac. Works it across. Caberly pounded it in on goal. But it's smothered in the pads of Joseph Heiss. Joseph Pepe Heiss has done the job tonight. Still working on that shutout. He plays for Cologne in the German League, and his coach there is Bob Murdoch, well-known coach in the National Hockey League and a former National Hockey League player. Pepe Heiss had lots of opportunity to come out, cut down the angle, and nobody screening him. Twenty-five seconds left in the four-on-three man advantage, and then for ten seconds it will be a five-on-four man advantage for the Czech Republic. Buck rolling back, Robert Long. Works it over to Reichel. Sikora, up to Cadillac. Across for Reichel, punch that one in wide. Nine seconds left in the four on three. Here's Cadillac. Cadillac still dropped it there, and Reichel couldn't deliver it on goal. One man back on, five on four advantage. Sakura wired that one. That's knocked away. Reichel tried to hit Cadillac. That was broken up, and the team back at even strength. Lead pass, big chance. Oh, and just fired wide of the net to set out of the box. Pardon me, Ludman out of the box and into the play. Crashed into the boards. What a chance. The teams came back to even strength and Ludman breaking right in on goal. Brandel just set him up perfectly. You could see Ludman just go crashing into the end boards. Ludman's getting up slowly. Great breakaway speed on his part. You can see that he's notioning to his teammates that he's fine. Going back to the bench wishing he had a score rather than crashing into the boards. And meanwhile, Drahomir Cadillac heading to the penalty box. He gets called for slashing. So the Germans go to work in the power play. They have two power play goals in this game. Czech's intention coming out to start this third period, no doubt, to try to score in that power play. Instead, things have just got worse for them. Here's Meyer. Steering it up to Usdor. Dreisel trying to get towards the front of the net. Bend is up there too. Bend it, just fanned on that. And the pass going astray from Usdorf all the way down the ice. 138 to go on the power play for Germany. Germany leading five to nothing against the Czech Republic. You better keep saying that, Paul, because I think there's a lot of people that don't believe you out there right now. Believe it. Dreisel up along the boards. Back to height. Shoots. That's kicked away. Rebound in front. Knocked out by Hammerlick. 113 to go in the German power play. 
Doucette breaking towards the front of the net. Hammerlick got there first, up around the boards. McKay couldn't pick it up. He was thumped there by Nedved, too. This is Noak. 55 seconds left in the German power play. Here comes Hagen. Shoots. Hagen just lofting a wrist shot in there. Breeze is stopping that one. This is Doucette. Hagen on the way, has McKay up on the right side. Delayed penalty coming up. Goldman, fire that one in low and wide. Germans will have a two-man advantage for 31 seconds. And it's Peter Nedved heading to the box for the third time in this game. Well, Peter Nedved right from the very first shift of tonight's hockey game has just had a very frustrating evening. He's taken out three minor penalties and not been able to accomplish anything offensively out on the ice. The shots on net after the first period of play were 15 to 12 in favor of the Germans. In the second period, it was 11-9 in favor of the Czechs. Sixteen fifty-seven to go in the third period. George Kingston and the German national team that close to pulling off a major upset here in the European pool of the World Cup of Hockey. And that upset would be twofold. The win, an upset standing on its own, but it would also eliminate the Czech Republic from the tournament. And not many expected that, if anyone, heading into this thing. Here's Height, cranks it up there, that stopped. And held by Breeza. Randall went for a little spin. Eight seconds left in the two-man advantage for Germany. And then they will have a one-man advantage for a minute 29. So much talk about Olaf Kolzig not playing coming into this game. Maybe you see that shot from the point of Peter Breeza having some difficulty seeing it, but he is able to make that stop. But Kolzig, no doubt, will be back in the net when the German team, if they continue to hold the checks off, head to Montreal for the game Thursday night. Here's Height, has Brandel over to his right, gets it to him, Brandel shoots, they score! Germany. You can see how lackadaisical the Czechs continue to be defensively. There's just no way that Benda should have been left there with his stick in that position. Just a perfect pass here by Brandel, who's already had a goal tonight. He just laid that puck right across the crease, seeing that Benda was standing there with his stick on the ice, ready to take the pass. Good heads up play by Brandel. Nice tip in by Benda. Bad defense by the Czechs. Heck up there after it, trying to tuck it in front. It's grabbed and held by Peter Breeze. 16.08 to go. Six nothing Germany leading. I don't believe this and I've watched it. I keep looking at that scoreboard, Paul. Time ticking away in this third period, and I kept looking for the Czechs to get a little spark, but boy, they've had no spark. Hammerlin gets it up ahead. Kuchera coming down the right-hand side. Puck pulled away from him. Puck passing down. Holik up there after it. Heck. Up around the boards for Pika. Pika up there with Dreisel as they come to the line. Hammerlick knocked that away. Here's Dreisel. Slapped wide of the goal there by Meyer. Hammerlick starting back. Baranek coming in over the blue line. Burrows his way up into the corner. Baranek trying to center out in front. Knocked away. 
And the Germans with all kinds of jump. This is Doucette up there. Works it up ahead. Rumerick had the puck pulled off of his stick. Hagen looking for it. Caverly just clears the puck in. Peter Nedved up into the corner. Caverly at the line. Got by him. Here's Yager. Yaramir Yager. Patera picks it up. Comes in over the line with Nedved and Yager. This is Yager with it now. Patera trying to get loose in front. Yager tag teaming up with Nedved there along the boards. Now Yager breaks for the front of the goal. Patera couldn't get it to him. Caverly after it. Couldn't get there in time to keep it in. Here's Cadillac. Up for Yager. Nedved throws it across. Knocked down at the blue line there by McKay. Germans trying to just lock up that center ice area. Here comes Yager breaking in with Patera. Yager charging it on goal. Rolled it right through the goal crease, but nobody was home to finish the playoff. Hoosdorf back the other way. Stepping in deep. Hoosdorf dropped it back in front of the net. Walking up. Height. He had a good chance. Hoosdorf after it in the corner. Sakura gives the puck away to Hoosdorf. Throws it in front. Benda shooting. Frieza just got enough of that to knock it away. Benda gunning for the hat trick. Goldman with a shot. That stop. Frieza juggling and hanging on. And McKay mixing it up in front of the net. Oh, there's got to be a lot of that on the part of the Czechs. Lots of frustration. Gary, I don't know when you coach whether or not you were ever in this situation, but are you embarrassed? Are you frustrated? Which is the overwhelming emotion back at the bench right now? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not cheering for either hockey club out here, and I'm embarrassed for the Czechs. I'm embarrassed for their coaching staff and all the players on there because they have just been absolutely humiliated by their performance out there tonight. They have not shown up to play, and we have to say that they really haven't shown up to play in this tournament with the exception of about a period and a half in their second game two nights ago. Here's another chance. Ludman rifled that one. And Lupzig mixing it up in front of the net just back behind the play. Ludman with it again. He'll fire the puck in. Ludi Bukash had to know, though, that the players, and by the sounds of it, they wanted him and his coaching staff out of here. And that's been the talk in this tournament. And boy, the players on the ice certainly have proven that. Puck comes out. Weber shoots. Tried to tuck it in the short side. That was just blockered away by Heiss. Meyer clears that one in. Here comes Roman Hammerlick. Just in off the glass. Noah picks it up. Clears it back out. Polik trying to come out with it. Puck knocked down in front. Back out. Noah with a shot. That was blocked. Baranek lurking up there in the neutral zone. Couldn't come up with it. He'd have had a breakaway. Here's Bieber. He throws it across. Stepping in now. Kuchera walks up. Shoots. Heights juggled that one. Rebound knocked to the corner. Kuchera after it. He was given a bump by Noak. Pass up ahead to Doucette. Doucette bouncing it up. Height going after it. And he was knocked to the ice. Here's Patera, working with Baranek. Baranek lost his footing. Here comes Heck, shoots. Frieza got enough of that. Pika clears it up back of the goal. Heck couldn't get to it. Goldman starts back. Steps in over the blue line. Dreisel breaking towards the net. Caverly gets there for the checks. 11.05 to play in the third period. Six to nothing, Germany leading the Czech Republic. Peter Nedved giving chase up in back of the goal. Mixing it up with height. Heck giving a bump there by Nedved. 
Puck comes loose. Patera weaving in front. Drops it down. Nedved going after it. Yager in front of the net. Patera's up there too. Scramble in front of the goal. And a penalty coming up. It is going to be against Germany. The Czechs with a chance to break the shutout on the power play when we come back. Michael Hyde in the penalty box. He is called for cross-checking, so the Czechs will go on the power play with a chance to perhaps save face and at least not be shut out. Canadian Tire has great prices on everything you need. Plus, earn Canadian Tire money with every cash purchase of merchandise. Canadian Tire. Everyday low prices made better. You often hear hockey coaches and analysts talk about chemistry and heart and team togetherness and how important it is in winning and losing. Well, the Germans have had great team togetherness and great heart. They've got two National Hockey League players in this game tonight against 12 for the Czechs. It's been all heart. Well, one of the NHL players hasn't seen a shift. He's the backup goaltender, Olaf Kolzig. His Washington teammate, Stefan Usdorf, the other Usdorf out there over in the corner watching Yager on this penalty kill. Puck at the side for Nedved. Comes out, Cadillac shooting. That stop. Rebound. They scramble after it. Yager shoots. He scores. Yaromir Yager with a power play goal. And it's 6-1. to one. Germany with a comfortable lead, but no shutout for Joseph Heiss. Well, finally, Yaromir Yager gets that goal. You can see Patera really taking the abuse. He ends up getting that puck back to Yager, who goes to his backhand, finally finds the room behind Pepe Heiss. And the Czechs get on the scoreboard. The Germans, under coach George Kingston, will be talking about team defense and composure right now and staying out of the penalty box. Ten minutes to go in this third period of play. That is the first goal for the Czechs in this tournament since the third period of the first game. All of that offensive potential in the lineup has not been realized in this tournament. Jager gets the goal from Nedved and Patera at 9.48 on the power play. The first goal they've scored since 16-19 in the third period of game one against Finland. Well, in this tournament, we have perhaps seen a conspiracy as we talked about the fact that the Czech players really want new management and coaching by the looks of it and by the sounds of what has been going on right from when we first arrived here in, in Europe, Paul. And it sounds as though they want to bring in their own people, not the old people that have been there for years. It certainly has appeared that way on the ice as well, not just through the rumor mills. They have, in that sense, voted with their effort. Brandel shoots, ripped that one right on, and a nice stop by Peter Brisa. Brandel's really been kicking out there tonight. He's had some great offensive opportunities. He scored. He set up plays. He's been doing what we looked for him to do at the start of this tournament. Well, and he has a reputation as being a real team leader type, and he has shown up big time in this big game. And he's a young forward and one that will be a big part of the national team for years to come. He played for Cologne, Germany this past year and has been transferred to Dusseldorf. And they talk about that here, that transfer being like being transferred from the New York Rangers to the New York Islanders, two teams that hate each other and that love to battle each other. Height clears it up ahead. Teams at even strength, 9.20 to go in the third period. 6-1, to one, Germany leading the Czech Republic. Kuchera firing it down to the corner. Height back there to pick it up, given a bump by Baranek. Penalty coming up. And Hammerlick back to touch it. Penalty coming up, a boarding call. And that is going to go against Baranek. So the Germans will get another chance at the power play. They have three power play goals in this hockey game. Well, so much for any momentum that Yager's goal may have got, had for the Czech team. The Germans go back on the power play with a face-off deep in the Czech zone and that clock. I think every German hockey fan in here continued to look up at it. Not just 
to see whether they believe the score, but to see that time ticking down and the unbelievable coming closer to happen. Baranek in the box for boarding. Germany in the power play. Ustorf gets it back to the blue line. Meyer to Dreisel to Usdorf. Bend is parked in front. He's got a pair in this game. Usdorf. Usdorf looking. Lots of traffic in front. Tried to tuck it across. That was Ludman charging in from the blue line, but it's Jager charging back the other way. Cutting in on goal. Jager trying to get it around in front. The check shorthanded. 1.30 to go on the power play for Germany. Good work by Jason Meyer taking Jager out of the play on the one-on-one. -on -one. The Germans have got to make sure, though, that they have a safer power play here. They don't want to get caught. This is Benda to Usdorf. Dreisel with it. Nowak clearing it up. Benda trying to get loose in front. Here's Nowak again. Dreisel's parked in the slot. Benda moving back of the net, but Cadillac gets there first and clears it the length of the ice for the checks. 52 seconds left in the German power play. And perhaps more significantly, 7.48 remaining in this hockey game. 6-1 to one is the score. Germany leading. Hagen gets it up. Doucette pedals it up there into the corner. Hagen up after it. Doucette coming up to join the chase. Dieter Hagen along the boards. Doucette chops at it. Puck rolling around. Doucette finally manages to lasso it. Back to height. Back to Doucette. Shoots! Riza got a piece of it, and it just wobbled wide of the open corner. Ten seconds left in the power play. Here's height. Dropping it down low for Dieter Hagen. Penalized player back on. And the puck chopped up over the glass. And in amongst the spectators, six minutes, 58 seconds to play in the game. Six to one, Germany leading. You're watching the World Cup of Hockey. You didn't tell me. You never asked. But I thought we had everything in common. We do. We're both good. Doubleheader day in TSN. We have Russia and Slovakia coming up next. Canada is in action tonight against the USA. Big day in the World Cup of Hockey. Meyer. Rolling it up there, back of the net. Teams at even strength. Puck comes towards the front. Brando was trying to get loose. Broken up, though. Hammerlick clears it ahead. Meyer scooping it up. Intended for Brando. Hammerlick will control it. Kuchera takes the pass. Hammerlick. Over to Weber. Long pass up ahead over two lines for Joseph Baranek. Well, they'll be partying in the streets of Garmisch tonight, Paul. All the German hockey fans not believing, I don't think, only hoping when they came into this arena tonight that their yelling and screaming and clapping and singing would help their hockey club in this game. Well, it did help. But the players on the ice were obviously extremely motivated all day long to pull off the unbelievable. Caverly picks it up off the drop for Patera. Up ahead to Nedved. Finds a bit of room. Yager up there with him. And Nedved had it swept off of his stick. Dreisel in over the blue line. Pico was breaking towards the goal. Heck up there as well. And the sticks up along the boards as they mix it up. We'll see how chippy things get. Yager, meanwhile, flying up. Trying to break around the outside. Noah doing a good job to watch him. Yager trying to get loose. I've been pretty impressed with Dan Nowak in this tournament. Well, he looked good in that play against Yager. Puck comes out now to next cash. Next cash shoots that one. It was deflected wide. Yager along the boards. 
Here's Yager again. Broken up and cleared down the ice by Pika. Yager picking himself up slowly off the ice. And ice and call on Germany. 5-12 remaining in the hockey game. 6-1 Germany leading. The Germans will be off to North America for further action in this World Cup. And the Czechs all finished. The Germans will end up playing Thursday night in Montreal against whoever ends up second in the North American pool. Doucette, lead pass up ahead for Hagen. Works it across in front, Rubrik! And on goal, he ends up in the net. A holding call coming up. Rubrik charging hard. And a penalty coming up against the Czechs. Ruchinski heading to the box. My friend said you Tradition you about, oh, two and a half, three hours beforehand. It's been a big party, and the party is just now starting to really crank up into that next gear. This place will go crazy when the final seconds tick down. Germany on the power play. Doucette. Down into the corner for Dieter Hagen. Doucette back towards the blue line. That's knocked away. Height. Able to keep it in. Hagen up back of the net. Swept away by Michael Sikora. Reichel going after it. Number 26 for the Czechs. Gets it to Long, who clears it out. 1.30 to go on the power play for Germany. 4.30 to go on the hockey game. Germans can play the clock here. They can keep it on the perimeter. Here comes Long. Up there, shorthanded. Czechs just continue to get out muscle. That's been probably my biggest surprise in tonight's game. Here comes Hagen walking up there. 105 to go on the power play. To Doucette. Pulled away from him. And Kuchera will start back. Kuchera coming up. Weber with him. Holik up there too. So is Hammerlick. Holik hustling back to break that up. Reason to Hammerlick. Holik gets to it. As rings it up around the boards. Noick there to keep it in for the Germans. Holik knocks it down. And clears the puck the length of the ice. 30 seconds to go on the power play for Germany. Three and a half minutes left in the game. I don't know what song these fans here are singing, but they've been singing it for a couple of minutes now. And they haven't run out of words yet. Noick at the line, not able to keep it in. Here's Nedved breaking up. Nedved comes in and hit the side of the net. Nedved, the good chance, shorthanded. Busdorf comes back up. Cadillac with it. Penalized player back on. The team's at even strength. 2.48 to play in the game. Here comes Jager. Jager trying to charge through. Back for Nedved. Cadillac with a shot. Brando lost the puck. Jager gets it up ahead for Nedved. Nedved dropping it off. Patera cuts in. Centered it in front for Nedved. That's broken up. Long shot from Lupsig. Scores! Go figure. Andreas Lupsig makes it 7-1. to one. and I don't know who from. Just a long shot. Watch it from here, folks. Lupsig just lets go. Now watch the puck. It goes right off the Czech defenseman's stick and then ends up hitting Breeza and surprising him. As if Breeza never saw that puck. Look at how far out it was when that shot was taken by Lupsig.
Unbelievable. Seven to one. There is just no possible way that anyone in the hockey world would ever have thought that this game would be a 7-1 score at this point in time in favor of the Germans. No way. The consensus was Germany would be the team left behind after round robin play in this European pool. Yeah, for as poor as the Czechs had played, their talent should have just easily won them this hockey game by a three or four goal score. Instead, a very lopsided one in favor of the Germans. Weber clears it up. Knocked away. Kuchera centers it in front. Hammerlick with a shot. Height stopped that. And Heck coming back. Gets it to Hagen. One minute to go in the game. Holik shoots. Blasted that one wide. Moranek picks it up. Here's Kuchera. Well, it's not a famous commercial, but the Germans are going to Montreal. With just a huge win here. Here's Moranek. Fan on that. 25 seconds left. And the puck pops into the German bench. We get a stoppage. 23 seconds to go in the game. And Germany will advance on to the next round in the inaugural World Cup of Hockey. Too bad they can't bring a bunch of these fans with them. Oh, you bet they will be coming with them, Paul. <laughs> you know the streets in Montreal will have a lot of German hockey fans. And if there are any seats available on any flights going to Montreal in the next couple of days, you can bet there will be a people from this game tonight. Well, they are tradi uh, they traditionally at the World Hockey Championship, along with the, the <laughs> Swedes, they kind of give one another a run for the loudest, scored the last goal. most enthusiastic fans. So we'll see whether that transplants itself to North America or not. Fifteen seconds to go. History. The Germans shocked the Czech Republic, crushing them 7-1 to one to advance on to the next round in the World Cup. Amazing. Well, we knew going into today's hockey game that it was 60 minutes of sudden death hockey or maybe more, if need be. That's what we said originally. As improbable as the victory by Germany is, the score makes it that much worse. I mean, it was a beat. Yeah, it wasn't even a close game. 4 nothing at the end of the first period. We talked a lot off the top about uh, George Kingston's decision to start Heiss and Nett instead of Kolzig, and we thought that might be a factor because how can you possibly go into what's all intents and purposes a sudden-death hockey game and not play your absolute best? And as it turned out, the goaltending for Germany did not have to be a factor at all. Made a few good saves along the way, but really the Germans hopelessly outclassed the Czechs, and no one really expected that we'd be saying that today. As surprisingly as the end, as surprising as the end result was, uh, maybe just as surprising was the play of Jarmer Jäger, not just in this game, but through the entire tournament. He could not get it going. We're used to seeing him flying down the ice, charging wide, and taking it hard to the net. Every time he tried that, he was cut off and railroaded into the boards. He did not have a good tournament at all. Well, Jarmer Jäger might be the best one-on-one -on -one player in the world. Having said that, you still have to have a team game to make a one-on-one -on -one player effective. And if the, the opposition knows every time you're coming down, you're going to do it by yourself, yeah. then you just can key in on them. 
and it's much easier to break up the play. Uh, when he plays for the Pittsburgh Penguins, he's a great one-on-one -on -one player, but there's a chance at any given second that he's going to flip the puck over to Mario Lemieux. So all of a sudden, you've got a defender who's not quite sure which way to think. In these games that the Czechs have played, whether it was against Sweden, whether it was against Finland or the Germans, they knew that there was no sense of team play, there was no sense of cohesion on this Czech team, and as a result, you could key on those top guys like Nedved and Jager, and the frustration level builds and builds and builds. And it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, you're expecting Jager to do something. On the other hand, it's unfair to expect an individual like Yager or Nedved to have to carry the load for the whole team when there's a sense of disorganization right from the very top in the federation all the way down to the bottom. And you brought this point up a long time ago. It'll be interesting to see what happens to the Czech Hockey Federation and the way their program goes from here on in and what will happen in future World Cups for this, uh, for this nation. We'll take a short break. We're back in a more moment. Thank you. The definition of gray. The boring midtones found between black and white. The definition.